Hello, uh, Heather Gibson here, doctor of physical therapy. And I wanted to do a quick little video today and go over some information about how to use your crutch as your assistive device. So if you've recently had a surgery and you're not able to fully weight bear on your extremity yet, um, and you're getting sick of using maybe the scooter or you're putting all that pressure on your knee, um, then crutches are always an option. So. What I find frustrating about crutches sometimes is that I don't have any free hands to um, be able to hold or carry anything. Uh, so I've been working on getting better with the one crutch, right? So um, I'm gonna show you some tips for how to appropriately use one crutch. Um, again, before you wanna do something like this, you wanna make sure again that you have enough stability and that you're clear to be able to go down to one crutch versus two. Obviously it's not going to offload the extremity as much as two crutches would, right? So if you're not able to put any weight on that foot yet at all, then you're gonna wanna use those two crutches. But if you're allowed to start doing um, some more weight bearing on that extremity, um, then one crutch is an option, all right? So first and foremost, we have to make sure that your crutch is fit properly for you. So this is a pet peeve of mine. When I worked in um, an ortho physical therapy clinic for a long time, it always amazed me to see all these people coming in with their crutches and walkers not adjusted to them. So um, pay attention to actual the size and how you're using your crutch, okay? So what it should look like is that in standing, your crutch should not be jammed up so high where it's like in your armpit. So you wanna be able to wedge your hand in here. So take your hand like this, be able to shove it through like this. Um, and then your wrist, and when you stand next to it, the crease of your wrist should be close to where the handle is there, okay? So again, if, if the handle is way up here, way, way down here, um, you need to adjust that, okay? Otherwise, your elbow is gonna be doing funky things. You're gonna end up with a lot of irritation um, in these tendons here um, and your wrist, okay? So you wanna stand next to it. You want your wrist to be kind of neutral, upright, and not like cocked in super funky positions like that, okay? All right, let's talk about what side it goes on. So what I see the temptation is a lot of times for people is to put that crutch or the cane, whatever you're using, on the same side of that affected extremity, okay? So we don't want to do that. We actually want to put it on the other side. So this may seem counterintuitive because people think, geez, wouldn't I want it on the side that I'm trying to take pressure off of? But it's not necessarily true because by doing that, what I see is a lot of people end up kind of dumping their weight into that or sagging down onto the crutch, okay? So again, generally, the crutch needs to go on the other side. Move it, doggy. My pup, she's, she's worried about me. She's been super protective, it's really cute. All right, so crutch is on this side. Um, it's going to move with me. So as I go to take that step forward, um, I am going to move the crutch along with me and then progress that other foot, okay? So, I am not yet cleared for full weight bearing. I am not fully weight bearing. So again, as I do this, I'm shifting my body weight over here. I still have more weight in this foot and then I'm stepping through, right? This is what it tends to look like if you use it on that same affected side. You limp more, you end up having to lean over it weird. Um, and you can imagine that not only is it gonna slow you down, you're not gonna move very quickly that way. Um, over time, you're gonna start to get more pain um, in your lower back on that side, in the hip, um, even on the affected extremity, uh, you're probably gonna feel a little more irritation on that lateral, like the outside part of your foot and ankle by leaning like that, okay? So most of the time, once you're cleared for weight bearing, with your boot or the little rocker on the bottom of the cast, it's got like this rocker sort of shape. So it is meant to be able to help propel you forward a little bit. And again, by using the crutch on the opposite side, you might find that it feels a little more fluid uh, to kind of get that heel toe rock, okay? All right, last tip um, I want to share for uh, rehabbing and having to wear a cast or a boot, something like that, is getting one of these um, even up things. So you see this weird little thing that I have on? Um, it attaches on, so it's got these like rubber pieces. I'm gonna take it off so I can show you here. So it's rubber, um, it's got some layers in there, and then it actually just goes around my tennis shoe and latches over the top. Whoever invented this idea, I think they're genius. I think this is huge for, uh, again, evening out um, what's going on at the pelvis and hips. So 
again, with the boot or the cast, whatever it is, it tends to kind of lift you up an inch or two. Over time, you have this weird hip height and it starts to lead to a lot of irritation in the low back, sacroiliac joint, even the knee um, and the foot and ankle, okay? So get you one of these even up things. You can generally find these at Walmart or um, even Amazon sells them. You can often find them at the places too where you buy like crutches or if you had to rent one of those scooters. Generally those sort of places, uh, medical device places, will have something like this too, okay? All right, best of luck with your recovery and remember that this too shall pass and don't forget to do your physical therapy.